Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Oscar, I'm a bioinformatics scientist, and in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through a full guide on how to learn bioinformatics as a bio student. So by bio student, I mean anyone who's studying a bachelor's degree in any bio related subject. So that could be biology, it could be neuroscience, biochemistry, forensic science, or anything that kind of has a, a basis of biology. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I myself was once a biology student. I studied uh, molecular and cell biology in my undergraduate degree, and I transitioned into bioinformatics. So I'm going to take you through my personal journey and give you advice on how you can do the same. So it's actually a quite a common question I get is how do I learn bioinformatics? Uh, I have a lot of people that come from bio backgrounds wanting to get into the field, but don't know where to start. Uh, this is kind of a problem that I had to solve myself through researching trial and error. And so I think my story is going to be very valuable to you and help you make the transition that I made, but a lot quicker and easier. Now, this video might be quite long. However, if you want kind of the shorthand takeaway points from this video, I've made a graphic um, which you can access by clicking the link in the description and I'll send it to your email for free. So to get started, I want to take you back to when I was studying for my undergraduate degree. Now, as I mentioned, I was studying molecular and cell biology. I studied in the UK and the bachelor's degrees there in the UK are normally three years long. It wasn't until my second year that I started to think about what jobs were available to me after I graduated. And I was kind of researching what I could do with my degree. And to be honest, I wasn't that happy with what I was seeing. Working in a wet lab doing experiments didn't really excite me. I didn't really want to do that as a, as a job. Um, I knew the pay wasn't that great. And so I was doing a lot of research, trying to find out what other options I had. And that's when I started to learn a bit more about bioinformatics. So I started to do lots of research on bioinformatics. Um, there was one YouTube channel at the time, which I used to watch a lot. It was called OM Genomics. Uh, it's by this woman, Maria, and she basically covered everything about bioinformatics, like the field, but also did sort of tutorials, coding tutorials. And so she was a big kind of influence at the time uh, for me in deciding that I wanted to go into bioinformatics. And actually, she was a big motivation for me to start this channel because I saw how well her channel did. And I feel like there's definitely a market for, for this type of content. Anyway, so I started to learn more about bioinformatics and I decided that I was gonna try and pursue a career in bioinformatics. The next step for me was learning how to code. So after doing some research, I realized there was two programming languages which are used in bioinformatics. Well, there are more programming languages used, but two main ones, which are Python and R. So I did some research and at the time I decided I'm going to learn Python. I found this website called DataCamp, which is a website that has coding tutorials and data science tutorials, and they had a beginner's course on Python. Now through my university, I could get a free trial. It was like a three month free trial to DataCamp. I don't think they have that same promotion on anymore, um, but at the time, that's what I did. I started um, doing this pretty much every day after I'd get home from the library, so I was kind of fitting it in around my studying. I try and do about half an hour of data camp and I made a commitment to myself that I was going to learn Python. Now learning to code is hard. You probably see a lot of clickbait, like learn Python in one week or whatever. But I would say if you've never coded before, it's going to be hard and it's, it's good to set the right expectations, especially if you're trying to fit it around your other studying. Realistically, it's going to take three months three months to become like competent. But I made this commitment to myself and this was kind of right at the end of my second year. So as I said, the, the degrees in the UK are only three years long. So I was at the end of my second year and I decided I'm gonna learn Python. So I started to learn in the last semester of my second year and I basically continued to learn over the summer. So during that summer, I did have an internship as well I was working at a seismic data company, so not related to biology, but I did get to learn how to use the command line. So I was basically using a Linux machine 
um, and just learned some of the basic Linux commands for file manipulation and moving through a file system. That's not really important. I guess the main takeaway I want to get across to you from this chapter of my life is that I started to learn the fundamentals of a programming language. And my advice to you would be the same. You want to pick a programming language, Python or R, find a course and learn the fundamentals. So that's step one. If you're studying for a bio degree, step one is to learn the fundamentals of a programming language, either R or Python. Now, as I mentioned, that data camp course that I took, uh, I don't think that's available for free. And you shouldn't be paying, we shouldn't have to pay for a, a course to learn you know, to code. There are so many free resources online, on YouTube, for example, where you can learn this stuff. So now we're going to cover how you can find a coding tutorial that you should follow. So let's say you pick Python, for example. What you do, you go to YouTube and you type in Python tutorial for beginners or Python tutorial or something like that. A load of options will come up. And these videos range from, you know, a couple of hours all the way up to like 12, 14 plus hours. So what you want to do is choose one of these. Now, I, rec I would recommend if it's your first time learning to code, you want a course that's going to be slightly longer uh, because it's more likely to go through the basics and take you through uh, at a more steady pace, step by step. So I'd say pick a course that's more than four hours and one that's more recent. So let's say in the last three years, because as programming languages develop, uh, the syntax might change slightly, but I think uh, at least for Python, Python 3 has been around for a while. So if you pick a tutorial that's from the last three years, you're going to be fine. Now, I would I would recommend watching the first five minutes of a few tutorials. See if you vibe with the with the teacher, with the person who's who's teaching you. Also, have a look at the syllabus. Is it the type of thing you expect to be learning? You know, the fundamentals. Once you've done that you want to plan out how you're gonna do the course. So let's say the course you choose is six hours long. It probably will take you longer than six hours, and this is why. While you're following along the video, you should be coding alongside the video. So you might see them show you an example of how to do something. You wanna do it yourself on the laptop and kind of follow along. So I would say for a six hour tutorial, you should expect the course will take at least double that, so at least 12 hours, because you're going to be pausing it, doing it yourself, and also taking notes. I remember when I first started, I would like take notes on paper. And now it seems funny that I would do that. But at the time when you're first learning, you're so used to you know writing and taking notes you know on paper that it's kind of just what you're used to. And you know, it did work well. So realistically, that whole course, if you choose a six hour course, it's going to take you 12 to 15 hours. Now, if you're trying to do a bit every single day, which I recommend, so I recommend instead of doing one lump chunk of coding, let's say every Saturday, I recommend you do a bit every day because the way the mind works is you actually retain information better if you're doing it little, little and often rather than a lot every once in a while. So you want to plan out how long it's going to take. If you choose that six hour course, let's say it's going to take 15 hours I think if you do half an hour a day, it's going to take you one month. So that's step one. Do a course that's going to teach you the fundamentals of a programming language, either R or Python, and set proper expectations. It's going to take you a month, half an hour a day. Right, so back to my story. So I did that data camp course. It took me about a month. And by that point, I've, I've kind of covered, I'd kind of learned the fundamentals of Python. Now, the next thing you want to do is actually create some projects in that programming language. So these don't have to be related to biology, bioinformatics. They can just be anything you want, anything that you find fun. So for me at the time, I remember three projects I created that summer. One was a compound interest function. It wasn't even a project. It's just a function. It's a simple function to calculate the compound interest. At the time, I think I was interested in, you know, finances so I was, I was I created this function that could take an input value and an interest rate and calculate your return over a certain amount of time very simple another project I made was a Sudoku app so that used the Tkinter framework it's a 
it's a way to build a graphical user interface in Python. It's very simple. Uh, I think I just followed like a tutorial online to do that. But I remember being so happy, like once I built that app, I was showing it to my, my brother, my sister, my parents. I was so happy like over the moon that I could actually build something. And, like when you first learn to code, it's like the best thing in the world, the best feeling in the world. You feel like a hacker. You feel like one of those people in the movies who are like are wearing a hoodie and like hacking into the mainframe or something. Good times. Um, another project I built was a calculator. So again, using Tekin to like a calculator app. And by the end of this summer, something strange started to happen. And this is just a weird story I've just remembered, but I actually started to dream in code. I don't do it anymore. I literally only did it for a month. Like right at the start, I remember I w if I was stuck on a coding problem during the day, then at night I would actually like, like some, I don't know, I would like dream about it, but it would be like a, not like a nightmare, but I'd be like, I don't know, that's just a weird story, but maybe that will happen to you, maybe not. It literally went away after like a month, but it's just a weird story. Anyway, let's get back to the, let's get back to the video. So that's step two. Once you've learned the fundamentals of a programming language through a course, you're going to build one, two, three projects uh, in that programming language. And that's really going to solidify your learning. Okay, so that was that for me, that was the end of the summer. I'd spent the start of the summer doing the fundamentals course, the end of the summer, building out these projects. I went into my third and final year of university and I felt like I knew Python then. I was, com I was comfortable in Python. I'd done about four months you know, coding most days in Python. So at that point, I had my biology knowledge for my degree, and I also had my coding knowledge uh, from independently studying Python. Now, bioinformatics is kind of the combination of programming and biology. It's applying programming coding to biological problems, effectively. I did some more research, and I found this book. It was called Python for Biologists by Dr. Martin Jones. I went to my university library, they actually had the book there. So I got it out and I kind of went through this book. It's a textbook with like work problems um, and it kind of teaches you Python, but in the frame of biology problems, problems that you come across a lot in bioinformatics. So manipulating files and a lot of other stuff, which, you know, which I use still to this day. Um, now that book taught you Python as if you didn't know it, as if you were a biologist learning Python for the first time. But I'd already, I already knew Python at that, at that point. But this book was really useful because I knew Python, so I kind of breezed through that book very quickly. I didn't need to like relearn the concepts, but it did act as like a refresher, so I could refresh the concepts and apply them to these biological problems. Now that book, I think it's a bit outdated, but it was a really good book. And if you do want to get a, if you do want to get a copy yourself, um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description so you know exactly which one it is. But see if your local library has it, or I'm sure there are similar books out there now which are more updated. You know, Python for biologists, R for biologists. I'm sure you, I'm sure you can find one on Amazon or even in your in your university library that will achieve the same thing. Now I've started to combine the two. I've started applying my programming knowledge to biological problems. That's step three, find a resource, a physical book or a free online course again, a way to apply your programming knowledge to a biological problem. So this, this was at the start of my third year. This was my final year uh, in my undergraduate degree, my bachelor's degree. So around this time you had to pick a thesis project. Um, and in my mind, I definitely wanted to do a career in bioinformatics at this point. And so I was thinking, look, I want to find a project that's going to contain some sort of bioinformatics. So we had like options we could choose from. And I ended up finding this lab who were working on ash dieback disease. So this is a fungal disease that infects ash trees. And this project was basically building a model that could predict the disease state of one of these trees based on the methylation level of certain key disease genes. So this project kind of combined wet lab and dry lab. You know, I was doing the DNA sequencing, methylation sequencing, but then I was also coding out this model. And I guess that's kind of machine learning, like kind of introduction to data science and machine learning. I built this regression model that could predict the you know, disease state 
of a tree based on the methylation level of the genes. Now, this project lasted for pretty much the whole year. So I was doing a lot of coding, you know, most days. So I was really at this point, really internalizing, you know, how to, how to code. So now I was doing this research project in bioinformatics effectively. And during my final year, as you do, I started to look at jobs again. So I was thinking, look, I'm going to graduate in six months. What jobs can I get with my degree, but also having some programming knowledge and some knowledge of bioinformatics? Well, I was doing some research and again, like I couldn't really find anything, at least anything that I would be competitive for. Like a lot of these jobs, that were, like bioinformatics jobs, um, I would be competing with people that had, you know, master's degrees, PhDs, and without any formal education in bioinformatics, I was going to struggle to compete with them. So that's when I decided that I wanted to get some, I guess, formal training in bioinformatics. And that's when I decided to do a master's degree. So I applied for a few master's degree programs and I got a couple of offers. Um, I think with a lot of these these master's programs, there's a lot of people from biology backgrounds. I think it were, must have been like 80% of people co were coming from a biology undergraduate degree. So the competition was a lot less. And with my programming experience, I you know, I, it was fairly easy to, to get in. I got a few offers, well, a couple of offers, and I think I applied for three. Um, and so I ended up doing this one year master's program in bioinformatics and theoretical systems biology. And during that one year, I learned so much stuff. Like the way my program was structured, there was four semesters. The first semester was all theory, all learning, bioinformatics, maths, statistics. Um, so each semester was three months. Second, third and fourth semesters were all project based. So I did different things in each of these projects. The first one was based on um, protein structure prediction. So I was doing structural biology, kind of building pipelines, you know, w working with different bioinformatics software to kind of visualize these things, really cool. Second project was completely different. It was, it involved web development. So I developed this Django web app that could display the data from some analysis I'd done. I believe it was a gene set enrichment analysis and displaying kind of those gene set enrichment graphs interactively on this website. So completely different to the first project. And then the third project, I was building a pipeline. So a next flow pipeline to analyze whole genome sequence data from yeast. So again, completely different. I got exposed to you know, a whole different range of bioinformatics. Like bioinformatics is so diverse um, and I really got to see different parts of it. And that's why I highly recommend you do get some kind of formal training. Cause I believe when you're kind of just learning it on your own through online resources and books, you don't really get that practical experience. Um, and that experience like working in labs, collaborations, all these kind of soft skills you learn along the way are gonna be so useful in your career. So, you know, I did this master's degree. It was only one year, it didn't take that long. Um, it was over the pandemic, you know, right when the pandemic started. So, so I basically had to do this whole degree from home, but because it's bioinformatics, you kind of can, you just need to have a laptop effectively. So let's just bring it back quickly to the advice for you guys. So step four, step four is get formal training. Okay. So if you're coming from a biology degree, just like me, it's going to be hard to find a job in bioinformatics straight out of your bachelor's degree. Not to say it's impossible, but it's going to be a lot more competitive, especially um, if you don't have the degree that says bioinformatics. It's going to be a lot harder. Unless you have, you know, loads of projects on your resume that display your skills, you know, you may be able to get a job. And, you know, some people do, but it's a lot harder. So I decided to go into formal training and I recommend for, for most people the case will be you need to go into further education. Now the choice between masters and PhD is up to you. For me the PhD was it was a big commitment again you know three four years. Um, I wasn't really sure that's what I wanted to do and to be honest if you're not sure don't do it because it is a big commitment. 
I'm not saying don't do it ever, but just don't do it straight away. Take a year, take a year to think about it. Um, or like me, do a master's degree. Now there are benefits and downsides to doing a master's degree. Again, you're gonna have to weigh up the, the positives and negatives yourself. But for me, it was like, it was a no brainer. I, I wanted to, I knew I didn't want to do a PhD at this point. I wanted to go straight into the workforce. Um, and I thought a one year degree where I can get formal training um, and I can learn a whole bunch of stuff. I can come out of that degree and then be competitive for the jobs in the field. So again, as this degree was drawing to a close, I started to look at jobs again. And this time I applied for a few. I must have applied for, applied for at least 10 and I got two offers. Now this time I was a lot more competitive. I'd been coding for you know, over two years at this point and I had many projects on my resume through my undergraduate degree and through my master's degree um, which I could use to showcase my ability. And that's really the main thing you need uh, when, when applying for these jobs is you need to showcase your ability. So I got two offers. One of them was to work in a COVID-19 lab. So this lab, they built like the antigen tests and they didn't really have anyone like a bioinformatics team. And so they, were, they wanted to bring me on to be like the bioinformatics guy. So that was in my, like near where I lived in the UK. The second offer I got was to work in a, a computational lab in New York doing single cell sequencing. So single cell RNA-seq. Um, now the choice was pretty obvious to me. Like I was like, I'm going to New York. Like that's, that's sick, that would be so cool. Um, and plus I, I also wanted the training. Like I didn't, I didn't want to be the only bioinformatics person because I'd just be figuring out stuff myself. I wanted to have people around me and above me that would be teaching me um, because you know early in your career it's good to try and learn as much as possible and I feel like if you have that environment where you can learn from others it's going to accelerate you know how much you can learn in a certain amount of time so yeah I decided to move to New York like it was a big move I didn't know anyone but I decided to take the risk and yeah I worked in that lab for, for 14 months and after that, I then moved to industry, currently working in industry as a bioinformatics scientist, still in New York, but working remotely. And that's pretty much my story. So this is quite a long video, but I really wanted to kind of go through my personal story because I, I think a lot of people are going to be able to relate. A lot of people that are going to be studying for an undergraduate degree in a bio related subject and they're going to be thinking, I don't know what to do with my life. Like, I want to go into bioinformatics, but like, how, how do I even learn bioinformatics? And people have asked me this. Um, so hopefully my story can show you that it's possible. And honestly, I'm really glad of how, how it's gone so far. So that's my story, but let's get back to the advice that I want to give to you guys. You guys that are doing your bio undergraduate degree I want to move into bioinformatics. These are the steps. And actually I've summarized the steps in this flow diagram. If you want me to send you this, click the link in the description or send it to your email for free. But let's just go over it quickly. So step one, learn the fundamentals of a programming language. You want to choose Python or R. These are the main two programming languages that are used in bioinformatics. Which one do you choose? Honestly, the choice is up to you. It will not matter. And trust me, once you know Python, you can learn R. Once you know R, you can learn Python. They're very similar languages. So it doesn't matter too much. Don't fret over that too much. Once you've learned the basics of the programming language of your choice, Python or R, you then want to build projects. Like this is where you're really gonna learn. So I'd say build one, two, three projects if you have the time don't necessarily have to be related to biology, bioinformatics, just stuff that, stuff where you're gonna, you're gonna use the fundamentals in a practical way. And trust me, this is fun. This is really fun when you first start coding, when you first start building stuff, you, it feels great. Third step, now you know programming, you know biology, now you need to combine the two. So I told you about that book, Python for Biologists, that I went through. Um, again, I've linked it in the description if you wanna take a look, but I think that's a bit outdated now, so I'd say, have a look at your local library, 
or just get one off Amazon, like a similar one. Have a look at the syllabus. I'm sure they're all going to be pretty similar. You want to learn how to how you can apply your programming language to biology. That's step three. Step four. Get practical experience in bioinformatics, and you do this through your thesis project. Okay, so you basically want to get on either a thesis project or some coursework at your university, which revolves around bioinformatics. That way you can get actual experience and you can put that on your resume. So for me, like the project I did in my thesis project for my undergraduate degree, I put it on my resume. So when I applied for my master's program, I could show them, look, I've had this experience in bioinformatics, not only programming, but I have this project to show for it. That allowed me to get multiple offers. Okay, step five, further education, formal training, get that master's degree, get that PhD. Not always necessary, but that's what I did. Even after my um, undergraduate degree thesis project, I still wasn't that competitive for jobs. So having that master's degree, not, in a la not only allow me to learn, you know, all about different aspects of bioinformatics, but also allow me to be competitive for those roles to move into after I, I graduated. So that's pretty much it. Five main steps that I think you should take if you're a bio student looking to get into bioinformatics. Now, I do recommend you do your own research on this. You know, there's so many resources I used at the time. I'm trying to think. So I mentioned that OM Genomics YouTube channel, but another one was the bioinformatics subreddit. So you probably heard of Reddit, like the social media. Go on there, you can get like your questions answered. There's so many people have put their like personal accounts of working in the field. Just go, go and do your own research. Like don't just have this video, but this is a good starting point. And honestly, if you follow my instructions, you will be successful because I've done it and I'm just an average guy. If I can do it, you can do it. And actually, one thing I forgot to mention was this website called Rosalind. So what this is, it's basically a website where you can practice bioinformatics coding problems. So there's like, it's completely free. You go on there and it's a bit like leak code. I don't know if you've heard of leak code, it's, it's probably more popular, but it's basically where, you know, you go on and you can work through many coding problems. They start easy and they get progressively harder. And I started doing this, I think in my third year, um, after I'd done that Python for biologist, biologist book, I started going through these problems and I was doing at least, my goal was to do one problem every day, just to keep on top of it. Cause when you've got all your, your, when you've got all your university work, it's hard to kind of make time for it. But I, I made a promise to myself, one problem every day, 15, 20 minutes, as long as I do that, it's fine. So I've checked that out, check Rosalind out. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. That's pretty much it for the video. I'm going to write a blog post, um, on this video, which is probably going to go into a little bit more detail because I might have forgotten some things. I'll link that in the description as well. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, just drop a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.